I've got to be honest, some of the default settings and UI layouts in DaVinci Resolve are just annoying. I'm going to show you all the things I check every time I'm on a new machine. Now let's start with some preferences. Open up the preferences menu and then go to user and then UI settings. In Resolve 20, we've got a new option called use optimized UI layouts for vertical video. If you have this turned on while working with a vertical timeline, you'll get this little button that shows up in the UI. Click that and your timeline viewer will take up way more of your screen to make it easier to see what you're doing. This is available on the cut, edit and color pages. Show focus indicators in the user interface. This adds a thin red line at the top of the panel that's currently the focus of your program. It's really useful when you edit using keyboard shortcuts so you know which panel is active. For instance, if you're marking in and out points by pressing I and O on the keyboard, you can tell whether you'll be adding them to the source viewer or the timeline. Use gray background for user interface. By default, DaVinci Resolve uses a blue gray UI background, which supposedly is meant to provide what they call a more attractive experience for users. Turning this checkbox on switches DaVinci Resolve to a totally neutral, desaturated gray UI. The colors that your eyes see in your image are affected by the colors that surround them and you start compensating for it in your grade. That's the same reason you should have neutral gray walls in your edit suite. Turn this on and never think about it again. Use gray background in viewers. When it's turned on, it sets the background of all viewers to gray, making it easier to evaluate the edges of your image when you're making sizing adjustments. The dark background can make it a little bit harder to tell where the edge of your viewer begins. 2D timeline scrolling. Now this is a personal preference. Checking this box will scroll the timeline vertically through all the video and audio tracks when you scroll the mouse wheel. Unchecking this box will scroll the entire timeline horizontally. Use whichever feels more natural to you. Timeline sort order. This lets you set the default sort order of the timelines that appear in the viewer dropdown menus throughout Resolve. In the project save and load section, keep load all timelines when opening projects turned off. It will make your project open quicker if you've got a ton of timelines in it. Under the save settings, turn them all on, set the numbers to your personal preference and give yourself some peace of mind. I know Resolve is often seen as way more stable than something like Premiere Pro, but anyone who says it never crashes is lying. There's no such thing as a 100% stable video editor. We have a new section in Resolve 20 called Cache Management. Check the box to automatically delete any cache files older than the number of days set in the field. Your hard drive will thank you. There are a couple of options under editing you might want to check. Start timecode is where you set the default starting timecode for every timeline you create. Files for broadcast usually default to something like 01 or 10 at the beginning. Since most of what I work on is for online platforms, I'm usually just starting it at zero, but it's good to know it's here. There's an automatic smart bin section. If you use smart bins, you can turn on some automatic ones that will read the metadata you've got on your clips. And if you have no idea what these are and you want me to make a video about them, let me know in the comments. All right, now I want to look at the UI itself, but just before I do, I want to have a quick moan. There are lots of tools that are available on multiple pages, and sometimes, for no apparent reason, one page will have worse functionality than another. So here are two things that are better on the cut page than the edit page. First, dynamic zoom. When you enable it on the cut page, you've got presets for side to side panning or corner to corner. These have been here for a while and I thought they'd eventually add it to the edit page, but we're on Resolve 20 and they still haven't done it. It's a little thing, but especially for panning, it can be kind of fiddly to set that up manually so that the start and end states are the same size and there are zero reasons for reserving that for the cut page. The second thing is voiceover recording. Now they've implemented an easier way for you to record voiceovers directly onto the timeline in the edit and cut pages by pressing this button and picking a couple of options. That's a great addition, but for some reason, they made the cut page version way more powerful by adding a built-in teleprompter that lets you import a text file of your script and during recording, the text scrolls over the picture. I really hope this video becomes out of date soon and they add that to the edit page as well. All right, end of moan, let's look at the UI. Under the timeline view options, you'll see viewer background settings. Remember before when I said it can be hard to see where the edge of your frame is when you're resizing things? There are a couple of options you can pick here to make it easier. You could pick checkerboard or the new option of alert red and make it blindingly obvious when you've got transparency issues in your frame. There are a few things in the media pool you should know. If you've imported a folder of material into the media pool, try turning on automatically resync media files then, if you add another file to that folder in the Finder window, it should automatically be added to the media pool without you having to do it manually. In the media pool, as well as the effects panel on the edit page, click on the drop down menu next to the search icon. For some reason, they default to only searching in the bin you're currently in. If I knew what bin something was in, I probably wouldn't need to search for it. Change that to all bins and you search the way it's supposed to work. Here's another couple of media pool tips you might not know. You can have two media pools open at once by turning on dual pane media pool. If you're constantly bouncing between two different bins, it can be handy to have them both open simultaneously. Also, I know you can't make massive changes to the UI layout like in Premiere Pro, 
but you can turn the media pool into a floating window. Right click on a bin and select open as new window and you can put it anywhere on the screen or even another screen if you've got two monitors. And speaking of floating windows, did you know there's a text pad built right into Resolve? You'll find it under file, project notes. It's super basic and doesn't have any formatting options, but I often use it for notes so I don't have to keep flipping back to a web browser or a PDF or something. Both the edit and cut page can now access the track EQ, dynamics, and track effects directly from the mixer without having to go to Fairlight first. If you want to eke out a little bit more screen real estate, you can right click the bottom of the UI and select show icons only to remove the labels. You can also get rid of them completely by going to workspace and turning off show page navigation. You can still switch pages by using keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you don't remember what they are, go to workspace, switch to page, and you'll see the list. The buttons for the project manager and project settings will also be hidden, but you can access them by pressing shift and one for the project manager and shift and nine for the project settings. Now we'll hop over to Fusion. In the node editor, there's several settings you can play with to change how you organize your node trees. You can turn on arrange tools to grid to make them snap to the grid. You can turn on orthogonal pipes so they always appear in straight lines. If you hold Option or Alt on a PC and click on a pipe, you'll add a point that you can drag around if you don't like the way the pipes are lying in the tree. You can show tile pictures if you want to have a visual representation of what a node is doing. You can also turn on Build Flow vertically if you would rather have your node tree build top to bottom rather than side to side. Use this in conjunction with Workspace, Layout Presets, Fusion Presets, and one of the vertical presets to have your node editor either on the left or the middle of the screen. That's especially handy if you're working with vertical video and you want a larger viewer. You can see guides in your viewer by hitting Command or Control and G. You can turn individual guides on or off by right clicking in the viewer and under the guide section, unchecking the individual guides. You can't seem to create custom guides though, which is something I missed from After Effects and Photoshop. If you're using a studio version of Resolve, there's a composition of DCTL available on aescripts.com. I've not used this personally, so I can't speak to how well it works, but I'll leave a link in the description. This is the sort of tool that should really already exist, and it's really annoying you have to buy a third party option. One other view you might not have noticed in the Fusion page is the sub view. Hit this little icon, and you've got access to lots of different scopes that could be useful. You can resize them and move them around, and you can even hit Shift and V to swap them so the scope is full screen. Here are a couple of quick hits on the color page for when you use Windows. Go to Preferences, User, Color, and turn on High Visibility Power Window Outlines. Now the window on-screen controls will be green for the actual window shape, yellow for the softness feathering, and blue for the resizing, so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. One setting you should definitely be aware of is in the keyframes panel. Have you ever had the issue where you have a shot that you've applied image stabilization to, and then you've attempted to copy a grade from another shot by middle mouse clicking, only to find your stabilization has been removed? On the keyframes panel, change this setting from all to color, and that will stop any sizing information like stabilization being overwritten. On the Fairlight page, the mixer can contain a lot of options, and if you've got a small monitor, you might struggle. You can click on the three dot menu and choose which sections you want to have visible. This could come in really handy if you're low on screen real estate. You can also turn the viewer into a floating window by hitting this little icon in the bottom right corner so you can resize it and reposition it wherever you want. On the Deliver page, you can see more information about the jobs you've got in your queue by selecting Show Job Details in the three dot menu. You can also change how much of a preview you see during the export by selecting the three dot menu in the viewer and picking an option under Updates During Renders. If you don't have the most powerful machine, you might get a tiny bit more juice by turning this off. There are so many options and menus and submenus that this is only a small selection of the ways you can customize how Resolve works. I'm still discovering new things every time I open the program, so if you've got a cool UI hack you always use, put it in the comments so we can all learn about it. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.